In this lecture, we're going to look at output price and profit and how companies determine how to maximize their profits. So remember, profit is all the money that you bring in from selling your output and then subtract your cost of production. So economic profit is total revenue, which is the price of your product multiplied by the quantity of sales. Um, minus your total costs. So remember your total costs of production are going to include both implicit and explicit costs. Um, these would include the payments to all productive resources, some of which are fixed and some of which are variable. So in the majority of the data that we receive um, in the problems that we'll do in class, the implicit costs of production have been accounted for and you can assume that. Um, so economic profit is profit above and beyond the implicit and explicit cost of production. So a normal rate of return is zero economic profits. Um, because all implicit and explicit costs are accounted for from an economist's perspective of calculating profit, profit um, if you walk away at the end of the day with no extra after you have paid all your costs, then that is just fine because you've already accounted for the implicit costs um, for things like the fact that you could be working somewhere else and you're not. So you're already paying yourself um, back for that implicit cost and you're covering that. Um, you're covering the implicit costs of you know the depreciation of your machinery or the cost of owner-occupied resources like you're working out of your home. All those things are already accounted for in the data. So at the end of the day if your total revenue minus your total costs is zero, that is just fine. And that's considered a normal rate of return and perfectly acceptable, again, because your implicit costs have been accounted for. Um, now, if your costs are greater than your revenue, then you're obviously going to want to um, minimize your losses. And if your costs are less than your revenue, then you're going to be earning positive economic profits. So economists view profit differently than accountants do. Um, accounting profit is always stated um, at, a, at a larger rate than economic profit because accountants do not consider implicit cost of production, whereas economists do. Um, so if you were reporting as an accountant, then a normal rate of return of zero would not be acceptable. But as an economist, a normal rate of return of zero is perfectly acceptable because your implicit costs um, are already covered. All right, so firms face a demand curve on which price and quantity are related. A firm, therefore, can choose either price, like the price they're going to sell their product at, or the quantity of sales, but they can't choose both because the demand curve cannot be ignored. So, for example, if I decided I wanted to sell five units of output, I would need to reference the demand curve for my product to figure out what I could charge if I wanted to sell all five, if I was hoping to sell all five. Or, if I wanted to choose the price at which I'm going to sell my product, I would need to reference the demand curve for my product to figure out then how many I could sell at that price. So you can choose price or quantity but not both. And we're going to see through our analysis here that it's actually smarter to choose the profit maximizing quantity of sales and then reference the demand curve for price. Alright, so here's the demand curve for L's garages. Back to the L's garage example here. And um, if L decided that he wanted to sell three garages per year, he would need to charge $26,000 per garage. If he charged any more than that, he would not sell all three. He could charge less, but that would be stupid. So he's going to charge $26,000 per garage. Or if he wanted to sell eight, he could charge $16,000 per garage. Um, if he wanted to sell five, he could charge $22,000 per garage. So you can see you have to reference the demand curve for the second piece of the puzzle here. All right. Now, an important assumption as we move forward is that maximum total profit is the firm's goal. So there are companies out there in the real world um, that focus on charity, um, you know, philanthropy, things like that, nonprofit um, organizations, but we're assuming in this class that we're studying for profit organizations and they want to maximize profits. So keep that as an assumption as we move forward. Um, 
Now, a couple other terms that you're going to need to know, again, as we move forward, are marginal revenue and average revenue. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue that you bring in when you sell an additional unit of output. Okay, for example, if I sold five units of output and my total revenue was $25, and when I sold six uni units of output, my total revenue is $28, then the marginal revenue of that sixth unit of output would be three dollars because I increased my total revenue by three dollars when I added that additional unit of output. Um, average revenue is just an average <laughs> of um, your total revenue divided by the quantity that you're selling. And the average revenue is the same thing as the selling price. Alright, so just to show how those calculations are applied here, you can see that marginal revenue is just change in total revenue over change in output and this is nice and easy once again because output changes by one each time in this data so the marginal revenue is just going to be basically the difference between total revenue as you move down um, down the line here alright so here's total revenue what the total revenue curve looks like for Al's garage and you'll notice that um, we do reach a point where total revenue begins to decrease and um, we did learn a little bit about total revenue when we studied elasticity so total revenue is a hill it'll increase and then it will eventually decrease uh, but the revenue sides only have the story so if we want to determine profits we all also have to consider the cost of production um, let's just review some of the cost um, figures that we've studied so we have studied total cost figures which would be total cost, total fixed cost, and total variable cost. We have studied marginal cost, and we've also studied some average cost figures, including average total cost, average fixed cost, and average variable cost. So, um, in your practice problem packet, um, there's a sheet you can use to follow along as we move forward here and describe the five ways you can interpret your profit maximizing um, level of output. And there are five methods we're going to learn. And keep in mind as we go through these that the goal is to maximize total profits. Profits typically increase with output and then fall. And some intermediate level of output therefore generates the maximum profit. So here's method number one. Total um, revenue cost and profit analysis. There's a few different ways we can um, analyze profit maximization using total cost, revenue, and profit figures. So method number one is the table interpretation. So with this method, you're just going to calculate total revenue, total cost, and total profit for each level of output, and identify the level of output with the highest total profit. So you're just going to have to do a few, some calculations um, in a table. For example, for Al's garages here, um, if you're given total revenue for each level of output and given total costs for each level of output, then you can calculate your total profit at each, at each level of output. And you can see that for Al here, um, his profit maximizing number of garages is six because that's where his total profit is thirty three thousand per year which is totally acceptable because remember we said um, a normal rate of return of zero um, would be totally fine method number two is the graphical interpretation of profit maximization and here's where we calculate total revenue and total cost for each level of output plot these two curves on the same graph and identify the level of output where the vertical distance between total revenue and total cost is the greatest because the, the area in between total revenue and total cost where total revenue is greater than total cost is going to represent the area of profit. So it's kind of tough to see in this example here. I, this isn't my favorite method of maxim, um, interpreting profit, profit maximization but we just have to learn that this is one way you could possibly do it. Um, you can see here at six garages that the vertical distance between total revenue and total cost is the greatest and another thing to mention there is that the slopes of those two curves will be equal at, um, at that point. Alright, click through all this extra stuff here. Alright, method number three is when we graph the total profit curve and just look for the highest point on the curve. So calculate total profit, graph that total profit curve and just identify where it's at its peak. So that's pretty simple. Um, and this is a great example because you can see that total profit actually peaks a little bit past six garages. 
um, but you know you can't sell a half a garage. So if total profit is highest in between two levels of output, you're going to backtrack and go back to the um, the last whole number. You can see that total profit is higher at six than it is at seven, which is why you backtrack instead of moving forward to seven. All right, now we get to the methods that we'll be using more often. The marginal revenue cost and profit analysis. We'll be using these methods the most as we move into unit five in this class as well, so get used to these. All right, so method five here is marginal cost and mar or actually this is method four, isn't it? There's a typo there. Method four is the marginal cost, marginal revenue table interpretation. Um, this is where you calculate marginal cost and marginal revenue for each level of output. So that's going to take a little calculation. And what you're going to be looking for here is the level of output where marginal costs equal the marginal revenue. Um, when we're doing marginal analysis and practicing marginal analysis, we're looking for the level of output where our marginal costs equal our marginal benefits. And our marginal revenue is like our marginal benefit here. So in a perfect world, if MR equals MC, that is ideal. Um, but we don't live in a perfect world, and MR and MC don't always equal e each other at a, at a whole level of output. So if you have to look for one number that's bigger than the other, you're going to want your benefits to be greater than your costs. So you're going to stop where marginal revenue is greater than marginal costs, but not go on to the next level of output where your costs become greater than your revenue. Alright, and you can see here Again, not a perfect world here for Al's garages. His sixth garage um, is going to cost him an additional $7,000 to build and bring in an additional $10,000 um, to his company. So that's a great decision. He, it only costs him $7,000 and he brings in $10,000. If he goes on to the seventh garage, it costs him an additional $9,000 to build that garage and only brings in $6,000 in revenue. So. Obviously, the seventh garage would not be profitable. It would not be smart. So he's going to stop at six. And in a perfect world, um, these two numbers m could be exactly equal 10 and 10, or 7 and 7, or something like that. All right, last method of interpreting profit maximization is the marginal cost, marginal revenue graphical approach. And that's where you simply plot the marginal cost and marginal revenue curves on the same graph and um, identify where they are equal or where they cross. So um, the book didn't provide an example for Al's garages, but let's just say that this was our marginal cost curve and this was our marginal revenue curve. Um, we know that the marginal cost curve is actually like a check mark or a Nike swoosh, but we're only really concerned with the upward sloping portion of that curve, so that's why that's all that shows up here. And the profit maximizing quantity of output is where they cross. If they cross at um, a point that's not a whole number, you would backtrack to the smaller number because you want your revenue to be greater than your cost rather than moving forward to a larger number because then your marginal costs become greater than your marginal revenue. So that's how you identify it on, on the graph there. So the bottom line is that Marginal revenue equals marginal cost allows firms to determine the profit maximizing level of output. The demand curve identifies the price buyers will pay to purchase that level of output. And both output and price are now determined for the profit maximizing firm. So once again, the firm is going to determine the profit maximizing level of output and reference the demand curve for their product to find the price that they can charge to sell that product. Um, one more important detail very quickly here. An increase in fixed cost does not change the optimal output or price because it does not affect marginal costs. So with our Al's garage example here, let's say that his fixed costs increase by $10,000. That's going to change his total costs um, and his marginal costs at every level of output by $10,000. So looking at the graph here, here's um, the profit for Al's garages with a fixed cost and here's the profit with no fixed cost. You can see that the profit maximizing level is the same, six, um, in either scenario. So marginal analysis can be used to illuminate many everyday problems in business and else elsewhere, sometimes with surprising results. A new activity will add to profits if it more than covers its marginal cost, not its fully allocated average cost.